up, up and away. The euro is on a tear, soaring through $1.35, just what Europe does not want, especially Spain, where the economy slides deeper into recession. Well, it's not just the dollar the euro is surging against, it's pretty much everything. Out now to Stephen Sewell, he's global head of FX strategy at BNP Paribas. Steve, the euro up through 135 today. We've smashed the 200-week moving average. Um, is the next stop 140 or are there levels uh, in between? Well, certainly we would agree, yeah, uh, this is a big level. 135, well, has been our target. It's been our uh, Q1 target. So we've got to that today. We're very pleased with that. Um, but it's also been the high from 2011. So it represents a key technical level as well. As you said, we've gone through that. We think there's continued Europe bullish momentum in the market. So certainly our view is that uh, we're likely to continue to see this rally um, break above 135, sustain that rally and uh, go even further. OK, but doesn't everyone think that? I mean, uh, I, I suppose the question is, isn't the, isn't the market too heavily skewed towards the upside? Well, that's a really good point. Uh, I think, you know, if we go back six months ago, remember, this was a very non-consensus view, actually quite the opposite. The market was looking for parity 110 on the downside in euro dollar. So the market's changed a lot. And I think that feeds into the next point here on positioning. I think the market is shifting to a long euro position, but it's still very moderate. And just to give you an example, we have a, a, mon we have a, a positioning monitor here at BNP Paribas. It runs from minus 50 to plus 50, and our current rating for euro is plus 18. So yes, it's long, mm -hmm. but it's certainly not extreme, and we would suggest there's more room to go. OK, as I said in the intro, it's not just the dollar, of course. The, the euro is up against everything, including sterling. Now, I know you're pretty bullish on sterling. Is this moving the euro starting to make you think about revising that? Well, look, that's a good point. First, you know, two questions there. The first point, yes, is, is a euro move, and we are seeing the euro up against a uh, significant amount of currencies, not just the dollar. Uh, secondly, yes, euro sterling is no exception to that. Um, we like the pound, and we tend to think that 2013 will be a year that will be very kind to the pound, and we can see it rebound. Um, having said that, I think the disappointment with the Q4 GDP data, where we saw a contraction of minus 0.3%, that was released last week, I think has set sterling back. So the point we would make now is, what do we think going forward? And we tend to think we could have hit the bottom, or we probably have hit the bottom as far as UK growth is concerned. So certainly we wouldn't be aggressively bearish on the pound from here. We think it is likely to turn around. OK, just to finish up, uh, the trade-weighted euro is up almost 3% in January. Uh, that's quite a move in a month and um, sure to set alarm bells ringing in Frankfurt and Brussels. Will we hear or when will we hear Eurozone officials start to come out with verbal intervention or, or will they not get dragged into this currency war at all? Well, this is a really interesting point because uh, the, the Eurozone and the ECB in particular has been one central bank that hasn't been out there trying to actively weaken the, its currency. In fact, uh, Mr. Weidmann uh, recently complained about the Japanese doing just that fact. I don't think they're particularly interested. And, and certainly from our perspective, we would say uh, long-term fair value for euro dollar is around 133, so it's not too far from where we are. Um, I think if they do talk about the currency, I think it's going to be in muted terms and I don't think they're going to do anything aggressively to try and curb the appreciation. OK, Steve, thank you very much. That was Stephen Sewell at BNP Paribas. So the disconnect between the Eurozone's economy and financial markets intensifies. In fixed income, an Italian bond auction today. Rome sells the maximum €6.5 billion Euros targeted and 10-year borrowing costs are the lowest since October 2010. But demand, as measured by the bid-to-cover ratio, is soft. At around 1.3, it's lower than the previous five sales. Today's auctions mean Italy has now covered almost a fifth of its long-term funding needs for the year. Fiat earnings also set to cast light on Italy's recovery hopes. Official numbers are due out in about an hour, but Chief Executive Sergio Marchioni has already been talking. He says the automaker cut losses in the fourth quarter and remains on track to break even by 2015 or 2016. Fiat shares down around 1% though today, not helped by ratings agency Fitch. It said car sales in Europe won't return to pre-crisis levels until the end of the decade, if at all. That's all from us for now, but tune in every day at this time for a look at what's moving on the markets and why. I'm Jamie McGeever, this is Reuters.